better looking women than a man who's a B minus at everything. Get this through your thick skulls, ladies. Fat girls are gross. You don't want to lift weights because you're lazy. Just keep it real. You got an abortion because you didn't want to wreck your body. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 344th edition of TSR Live. Your morning cup of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. As always, we are presented by 1821manmade.com, your one-stop shop for all of your beard grooming needs. Let's get right to it. High-value men, guys, high-status men, men in demand, call it whatever, call it whatever you want. Most of the time, they're always fucking more than one woman. Some, some men are sleeping with two women. Some women are sleeping with three women. Some even more than that. Some men have a running harem of, I don't know, multiple women, five, six, seven, even more with women coming and going. And again, some men have a few chicks that they're sleeping with at one point or another, your, your regular harem girls. While this lifestyle is great, and I say this, guys, I say this all the time. This is something that I have always repeated. It is a recurring theme with me and my show is that most players, most guys who have lived that player life, in an honest moment, they would tell you that no, no matter how many females, no matter, no matter how many women they are banging, no matter how many women they happen to be sleeping with at that time, They'd all like to have that one woman who is is and who is his and only his. A woman who is always there for him, day and night, takes care of him, does what she's told, right? She's loyal, she's honest, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, of course, this is the fantasized and fabled long-term relationship, or as I like to call it, the main chick. Now. Having a main chick, having a woman that you can count on, it elevates a man's life in ways that most of us are unwilling to admit. Yes, we can all talk about how women are liars. Women can't be trusted. Women are, you know, they, they make terrible wives and mothers or how we don't need them, et cetera, et cetera. And those assertions are accurate. But let's not kid ourselves here, guys. Having that one female that we can count on, or that at least we think we can count on. It elevates our lives, guys. Yes, some of us will have side chicks aplenty. And yes, a lot of times this is necessary for many, many reasons. That's another show for another time. But it would be disingenuous for any man to say that he doesn't want a relationship of consequence with a woman. We all want relationships, and to say otherwise is lying to ourselves and everyone else. So now begs the question that we've asked many times and addressed on the show many times. So how do I find a woman worthy of being my main chick? How do I find a woman worthy of investing more than sexual intercourse with? Well, I would refer you to episode 330, how to decide if a woman is worth your time outside of sex. But even then, even then guys, you have not found a quality woman it is on us to turn her into a quality woman. LAR Movement, one of the guys that I do the Brother Pill podcast with on O'Shea Duke Jackson's vlog channel, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. He calls these women women of potential quality. And I agree because, again, quality women these days are nowhere to be found. And because of this, I will say it again, it is on us to build them. It's on us to mold them. It's on us to train them. Yes, I said train them. Now, as you all know, as most of you guys know, I am in a, I'm currently in a long-term relationship with a sexy woman by the name of Devin. You guys also know that she takes great care of me in many ways. She cooks for me. She never denies me sex. She's obedient. She does whatever I want during sex. She wears whatever I want. All that's well-documented. You guys have seen that. Now, Every once in a while, when I post this kind of stuff, I'll catch a few haters that say, oh, you know, Devin's mentally ill. Like, she, she, she's not mentally stable. She's mentally ill in a poor attempt to disqualify my success with her. Some guys will say, well, you wouldn't get away with that with a black woman, to which I would reply with, number one, there is no getting away with molding a woman that, there's no getting away with, quote unquote, 
when it comes to molding a woman into what you want and need her to be. And number two, this is exactly why I don't date black women because black women just aren't here to be molded. Of course, I've talked about this ad nauseum. I'm not going to make this a black woman bashing thing. I'm actually going to address that later. An idiot who stepped into the lion's den and got his ass ate is going to step into the lion's den again. And I'll, I'll give you guys a little, I'll give you guys more detail on that. Anyway, I catch a bunch of hate from losers. But the haters that I get, those guys are the outliers, right? Like, listen, most guys give credit where credit is due and they acknowledge the game. Now, in doing so, at some point, a lot of guys ask me, well, dude, how in the world do you get Devin to submit to you like this? How can I get my woman to submit like this? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today, guys. How I trained Devin, my girlfriend, to be what and who she is today. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, there is a caveat to this, and this is actually something, this is actually something that I've learned that I need to do. Getting your woman to be like mine, Devin, okay, it really depends upon the degree to which you in to which you engage the training. And of course, the degree depends on the results. And again, Devin is incredibly obedient. She's incredibly accommodating because I am incredibly demanding. I'm an extremist, man. Like I am out there. When I lay down the law, I lay down the law. Now, some guys might say, well, Donovan, you get too emotional, you get too, or you get too emotional though. That's, that, that's just their way of disqualifying the fact that I get fired up. Getting fired up is not being in your emotions. I'm a fiery guy, man. I'm a fiery guy. You can call that emotional all you want to. Listen, no tears going down my face. Anyway, I've recently discovered, like, like, like I go back and I listen to my episodes all the time. I, you know, I go back and I try to find my verbal tics, things I can improve on. I know I say listen a lot. I know I say here's the thing a lot. I'm well aware of this stuff. Yeah, you, you know, you try to work on it. It is what it is. But I've made the mistake of assuming that everyone can do what I do right now. Not that I expect everyone to do what I do right now, but th one of the main reasons why Michael Jordan made a terrible coach, I think he was a player coach at one time, is because Jordan expects everyone to have his drive, to have his passion, okay? Well, not everybody has that. And I'm not saying that you guys don't have my drive. What I'm saying is that you're not at the point to where you can do what I do yet. And even if you were, you're still, your personality is different. Your woman is going to be, a, your woman's going to be, a, listen, all women are like that. They all operate the same way. They respond to the same verbal and, you know, physical stimulus, et cetera, et cetera. This, 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 is, this is just how they are. But men are different from one man to the other. Just because I can do certain things with some women doesn't necessarily mean that you can to exactly the same degree and get exactly the same results. And here's another thing. You guys could get the results I get without being as extreme as I am because we just have different personalities. That's that, that listen, that's just how it is sometimes. Now, Devin gets dressed. She dresses slutty every time we fuck. If I tell her to go, listen, this is what she's wearing tonight. Well, part of what she's wearing tonight. Okay? I like, and again, this is well documented. I like Devin to look a certain way when I stick my dick in her. She is sexy as hell in slutty clothes. She is. But if your woman doesn't do what Devin does every single time, it's, it's, you, it's probably because it's something that you are or aren't doing. Maybe it's your personality. Maybe it's the fact that you haven't had that much time in the game. But again, it's usually it's, it's usually something very nuanced, something very minor, and it lessens the impact. It lessens the degree. You will get there at some point one day, but again, you can't do what I do right now. And this is why I'm on episode 344. And it's not your fault. It's not her fault. But again, you can't expect my results because you're not me and you don't do things to the degree that I do them. Th th listen, there's there are, there are many more th there's many more than one ways to skin a cat. Now, when you get to the point to where you can be demanding to at at my degree and do what I do, you're going to get similar results, maybe even a little bit better. My opening rant is brought to you by Happy Hippo Herbals, home of the highest quality kratom on the planet. Happy Hippocratum will give you an energy boost, laser focus, and increase your productivity all without caffeine. Go to happyhippoherbals.com now and save 20% when you pay with Bitcoin. That includes your shipping. 
It is Monday, October 8th, 2018. And gentlemen, the 21 convention starts this Thursday, October the 11th. Of course, I will be flying out. I'm gonna be flying from Philly to Orlando, which is the city that the 21 convention is gonna be at. Um, I'm gonna touch down, uh, I'm gonna touch down late afternoon. Uh, and then of course, I'll be giving my speech on Sunday, October 14th uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. Um, and you know, I get a lot, I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions from guys. Hey, is the 21 convention going to be streamed? Is it going to be parts of every speech are going to be streamed to some degree? Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm thinking Anthony will probably update the website, uh, and get, and, and get everybody apprised on this, but I think he's going to stream anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes of every one speech. So you're not gonna be able to watch the entire speech from all of the speakers until, and he releases them little by little on his YouTube channel, uh, but you will be able to watch some of the speech. And then of course, on Monday, October 15th, uh, we are going to do three tapings, three episodes of Red Man Group Live. Guys, this, I'm gonna tell you what, man, this is what I'm really looking for. There's so many things I'm excited about in terms of the 21 convention. I get to meet, a, I, I, get to mention, I, I get to meet a lot of my heroes. I get to meet a lot of my red pill heroes. I get to meet some, I, I get to meet a lot of the guys who have helped to shape and mold me into what I am today. I listen to a lot of these guys' advice. Rolla Tomas, I used to read him every day. And now the idea that I'm gonna be speaking at a convention that he is also speaking at, and that I'm going to be on a live panel with him, it blows my mind, man. It really, really does. So so meeting a lot of these guys, Alan Roger Curry, I can't wait to meet him. Ed Lattimore, I can't wait to meet that guy. He's probably gonna be the only guy who's my size, who's gonna be there. Um, dude, uh, dude uh, Hunter Drew, Tanner, G I mean like, oh, dude, Kristen McQueen is supposed to be there. Kristen McQueen was my fucking hero. He and I, dude, he and I could probably swap Vegas stories for days. So I'm very, very much looking forward to the 21 convention. And of course, I get to meet a lot of you guys there. Pine Frank is going to be there. Miami J is going to be there. Definitely looking forward to meeting those guys. I can, listen, th those guys are my friends, man. Those are my homeboys. But the Red Man Group Live to me, that is going to be the crown jewel. That's going to be, that is going to be the highlight uh, of the trip. I absolutely cannot wait, man. I am so, man. Um, I'm so excited, man. It's going to be very difficult for me to, to, uh, to, to, to maintain. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's going to be very, it's going to be very, very cool to see these guys. I'm going to have to try to tamp down my, my inner fanboy, uh, at least for the time being like in front of you guys, you know, I'll be Mr. Fucking Donovan Sharp, the alpha male. I, no, I'm not going to go, Oh my God, you're my favorite, but it's, it's going to be very, very cool, man. It's going to be very, very cool. I'm very, very excited about this, man. Three fucking days, man, three days or four days for me. Um, so, uh, the 21 con is, uh, it is, it is 21 convention week and I could not be more excited. Um, I, I, listen, man, I've spent th this weekend. I spent a shitload of money on Devin, I spent a shitload of money on her hair, spent a shitload of money on her nails. Um, I want her looking her best, you know, and listen, Devin looks great all the time. Um, but, um, you know, I want her to, uh, listen, your, your woman is a reflection of you. And, uh, that's part of the reason why I'm doing this episode so that I can let you guys know exactly how I got to this point, uh, with Devin. Uh, and listen, I've done similar shows to this. Hey, how to train your woman to be your main chick. But I think when guys say, hey, you know what? Donovan is going to tell us what he did, what he did to get to this point with Devin. I think it's, I think it's definitely going to, I think it's definitely going to resonate uh, a little bit more. So I'm, I'm very, 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 very much looking forward to the, uh, to the 21 convention. And um, that, uh, that's going to be all good, man. Um, it's going to be very exciting. The Eagles have dropped to two and three. Uh, we lost to the Minnesota Vikings uh, yesterday. It was a close game. Lost by two, 23-21. Um, listen, guys, I called it. I called it. I told you guys, listen, I'm, I'm an Eagles fan. I'm pulling for the Eagles. And when all said and done, um, I said, listen, if I'm a, I want the Eagles to win, but if I'm a betting man, I put my money on the Minnesota Vikings. And the Vikings pulled it out. Uh, they needed the game more than the Eagles did. They came to play. The Eagles are, and again, I called this, I called this at the beginning of the season. The Eagles are not going to be the same team that reeled off, what was it, 10 or 11 in a row before Carson Wentz tore his ACL out in LA. They're just not. We're in a Super Bowl hangover. Guys just aren't as hungry. 
Uh, we had the be- we we probably had the best offensive line in football the entire year. Our offensive line looks like Swiss cheese. Carson Wentz is under duress all the time. Now our defense seems to be our defense seems to be picking up the slack a little bit. But our offensive line is like, I mean, listen, we don't need to cut anybody. We got, listen, man, we got Jason Kelsey. We have Jason Peters, Hall of Famer. We've got, um, dude, Lane Johnson, who is the, we, listen, we have Lane Johnson, who is the best right tackle in football, and Jason Peters, who is one of the best left tackles in football. Five years ago, he was absolutely the best. He's going to the Hall of Fame. So it's not a lack of talent. At this point, it's just a lack of drive. This is just how it is. Super Bowl hangovers are a real thing. This is why it's amazing when teams win or even go to -to back-to-back Super Bowls to keep that hunger, to keep that drive. It's amazing. The Niners did it back in the 80s. The Cowboys did it back in the 90s. The Patriots did it in 03 and 04 when they won Super Bowls 38 and 39 over the the, uh, Panthers and Eagles, respectively. And uh, and I think they went to... I think they went, they've been to three Super Bowls in the last four or five years. They 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 uh, they beat the they beat the Seahawks. They they yeah they beat the Seahawks. Then they turned around and beat the Falcons. Then they lost to the um, uh, lost to the Eagles. It's just it's a it's it's very very hard to keep that up. And a lot of people have compared the Eagles to the to the Super Bowl forty eight champion Seahawks. You know young well not young enough becoming you know head coach sort of thinks outside the box. You have a really good quarterback who's on the cheap and a stout defense. And we like the chirp, man. The Eagles players like to talk. Lane Johnson is, is on record uh, talking a lot of talking a lot of stuff. But um, but yeah, so listen, man, I expected this. I, and listen, to be honest with you, I think the Eagles are probably gonna write the ship. If I'm a betting man, we'll make the playoffs. I think we'll I think we'll go ten and six. I think we'll go ten and six, eleven and five if we really, really get it together. But the Eagles are far from done. No one seems to want to grab hold of the NFC East at this point. Uh, the Giants are a lowly one and four. We're going to put the nail in their co- we're going to put the nail in their coffin this Thursday night because the Giants play the Eagles uh, on Thursday night football. The Cowboys, of course, uh, also drop to two and three, and the Redskins are the Redskins. Speaking of the Giants, the Giants are done. Um, they're one and four, and. They made the right move drafting Saquon Barkley. You need that bell cow running back. It's time to move on from Eli. Um, they don't They don't have a very good offensive line. Eli's running for his life. He is very deer in the headlights back there. Like It's almost like he has David Carr syndrome. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, David Carr was, the, I think it was the, uh, the Houston Texans' first overall draft pick as an expansion team. They picked David Carr out of Fresno State, who was coached by then, I think it was Urban Meyer. Was it Urban Meyer? No, that was Utah. Never mind. Um, David Carr came out of Fresno State. Could run, could throw. Yeah, they had Tony Baselli, Hall of Fame left tackle, who uh, who 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 made his money, who made a name for himself in Jacksonville, protected Mark Brunel and the upstart Jaguars. But David Carr, I think, was sacked more times in three years than any other quarterback ever. He was never the same. Well, Eli Manning is 37 years old. He's running for his life. He's getting hit. He's getting dropped. He's done. So the Giants, no one's going to throw games in the NFL. Too many people involved. But the the worst thing for the Giants would be to go 8-8 eight and eight and have like the 15th pick in the draft. No, no, no. The Giants need to go 1-15, and 2-14, 3-13, 5-11 so they can get a high draft pick and draft Eli Manning's replacement. That is exactly what they need to do. The Bengals are for real, guys. They beat Miami Jays, Miami Dolphins yesterday. They are four and one. The Atlanta Falcons are done. Um, listen, they've got a high-powered offense, but they've got way too many, way too many injuries on defense for sure. So the Atlanta Falcons are done, guys. It, listen, it's time for a change in Dallas. Um, listen, obviously, I'm not a Cowboys fan. I know Jonathan from Modern Life Dating is a is a big time Cowboys fan. I'm glad the Cowboys suck, but it's time for a change. It's time to get Jason Garrett out of there. Uh, you probably need to start looking at another quarterback. Uh, listen, Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, but his ceiling is not as high as we thought it was. There was this whole, who's better, Dak Prescott or Carson Wentz? It's Carson Wentz. And yeah, I'm probably a little bit biased, but if you ask people who don't give a shit one way or the other, if you asked Vikings fans, if you asked Cleveland Browns fans, if you asked fans outside of Dallas and Philadelphia, who is the better quarterback, Dak Prescott, Carson Wentz, the conversation's over. Carson Wentz was your MVP last season before he went down uh, and tore his ACL. Uh, and listen, Dak Prescott went 13-3. and three. 
okay, yeah, he was a, he played an integral an integral an integral role in that, but he had a great offensive line. He had Ezekiel Elliott. He had he had a number one receiver, Des Bryant. It was all there for him. Dak Pres Dak Prescott is not a bad quarterback, but he's not really a very good one either. He is above average at best. That's just how this is. Mason Crosby, kicker for the Green Bay Packers, missed four field goals and an extra point. That was unbelievable. I could not, guys, I could not believe what I was seeing. Like I was watching, it was funny, I was watching the, I, I was watching the Red Zone channel, uh, waiting for the, uh, waiting for the Eagles game uh, to come on, because the Eagles played the late game yesterday. And every time they would show the Packers and the Lions, it, Mason Crosby was missing. He missed four field goals at an extra point. He literally cost the Packers that game. So four field goals, that's 12 points. That's 12 points. And it, so he cost the Packers 13 points. And Mason Crosby, man, he's a Pro Bowl kicker. I mean, he's not, he's not Mr. Automatic, but he used to be. But this dude missed four field goals yesterday that was unbelievable unbelievable man so those are your around the nfl stories of course the big story over the weekend uh was what happened on saturday night uh conor mcgregor versus khabib nurmagomedov or nurmagomedov uh, however you pronounce it um so khabib won the fight he won the match as i expected um he won by you know by a fourth round submission but after he won the fight, okay, Khabib jumped over, he jumped out of the octagon, okay? He jumps out of the octagon and got and got in a fight with Dylan Dennis, who is a Bellator welterweight, who is also Conor McGregor's jiu-jitsu coach. Then two dudes from, uh, from Khabib's camp, uh, allegedly, they, they jumped into the octagon and started punching at McGregor, who was still, who was still recovering from the fight. Now, I didn't watch the fight. Um, it wasn't really worth it for me to watch the fight because because I kind of knew, I kind of knew that Khabib was going to win. But dude, that was unbelievable. Now, of course, people were arrested and Conor McGregor rightfully is not going to press charges. He's not a woman. He can, Listen, man, he's a fighter. He's not going to do that. It just doesn't make any sense for him. Yeah, I'm going to press charges, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, who gives a shit? But that, dude, that was absolutely crazy. That was absolutely unbelievable, man. I remember one boxing match I watched. I forget who it was, but a dude sucker punched him. Just sucker punched him after the match. He lost the match, had his gloves off, and cracked this dude right in the fucking jaw. And of course, he was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon. So that was something, man. What Like when I heard about it, dude, like the, my text machine was blown up. Oh my God, you got to be watching this. Da, da, da. I was like, dude, I didn't pay for the fight. I just, I, I'll just hear about it. I'll just hear about it. So uh, Khabib is stripped of the title. Uh, he got he got the belt he he got his title belt stripped. Dana White is going to take uh, the appropriate measures. Um, I don't know. Maybe there'll be a rematch. Maybe there won't be. But dude, you got to stay in pocket, man. You can't like 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 what are you doing? Like you win a match and then you're going to go get in a fight with one of his? Co get out of here! Come on. That was oh god. That was ridiculous. Khabib screwed the pooch. They uh, screwed the pooch on that. And finally, Brett Kavanaugh appears to have been confirmed for the Supreme Court. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, a hundred people voted and he, he got in by a count of 52 to 48, all but one Republican voted yes, all but one Democrat voted no. That was, that to me was very interesting. So we had one Republican dissenter and one Democrat dissenter. So it looks like Brett Kavanaugh is going to be, um, the, the newest, uh, Supreme Court justice for the United States Supreme Court. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, the, the social justice warriors uh, are going to take the loss on that one. Of course, you had the protests. Nya, 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 nya. Listen, man, protesting never changed anything, man. Protesting never changed anything. Of course, Donald Trump, uh, I think it was the last week or so, um, they caught him like outside of the outside of the helicopter. Hey, it's a dangerous time for young men in America. All it takes is an accusation. Guys, we've known this for years. Like, Guys in this sector of the, of, of the sphere, we have talked about this for years, years. And finally, finally, they bit off a lot more than they could chew. They went after, they, they, they went after, a, they went after the biggest fish they could find with the least amount of evidence. And it just didn't stick. It didn't stick. Nobody believes that whatever the hell her name is was sexually assaulted by Brett Kavanaugh. Nobody believes that. 
It was all 100% lies. I don't give a shit. It's it's over and done with. And again, I, listen, I'll admit where I'm wrong. The two people who have told me over the last six months that, hey, Donovan, the tide is starting to change, right? Like the, tardi, the tide is starting to change. Social justice warriors are going to start losing are Donovan from Modern Life Dating. He's told me this for months and Devin, and I didn't believe either one of them. But now we have this Brett Kavanaugh thing. Now the NFL doesn't do the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now they are including all of the cancers. Remember, listen, I think it was as recently as two, three years ago for the last 10 years, NFL players wore pink gear the entire month of October. Breast cancer, breast cancer, breast cancer. It wasn't about breast cancer, it was about women. Well, again, the tide is starting to change. Yes, breast cancer affects women. Well, we just wanna raise awareness, trust us, trust us, we are aware. We know breast cancer kills women. Prostate cancer also kills men. So the NFL has wisely decided to include all that encompasses cancer. So instead of worrying about what affects women, we're gonna talk about what affects everybody. So it's good to see that the, that the tide is starting to change. Listen, it's never gonna completely go away, at least not in my lifetime, but it is good to see that progress is definitely being made. If you would like to chime in about how I trained Devin to be who and what she is today, give me a call, 914-205-5356. If you have an unrelated question about girls, game, relationships, sex, or anything red pill related, you guys can hit me too. And of course, if you disagree with anything I say, definitely give me a call. Follow, add, and like me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just do a quick search for Donovan Sharp to get access to all of my content. Go to patreon.com forward slash Donovan Sharp. There you will find the archive of all complete episodes of TSR Live, both audio and video. So you can listen on the go or watch at your leisure. Now you can watch my show live every weekday morning at around 10 Eastern. And again, I'm on a little bit late today, just getting caught up on some things. But if you wanna be able to rewatch or re-listen to the episodes in their entirety, less than 17 cents a day is all it takes. If you wanna support the show, but you're a little low on cash, you can still contribute. Just, do a, um, just go to donovansharp.com and shop through my Amazon affiliate link at the top of my homepage by doing all of your Amazon shopping. Through my link, you'll be supporting the show at no cost to you. Great way to contribute if you are not a millionaire like Nick Loizaga. Shout out to you in the towers. I'm gonna to get to the I'm gonna to get to the chats here in a minute. I had the opportunity of booking Donovan for one hour and it was money well invested. Donovan is a student of human behavior, more specifically female behavior. If you have a question about game, Donovan will listen to what you got to say and it is definitely worth every penny. He's brilliant and he offers intellectual stimulation for anybody who wants to listen to him. I would highly recommend Donovan book your appointment today. Gentlemen, if you are looking for a mentor to help you during your red pill renaissance, if you need guidance to help you navigate a particular situation, or if you're looking for unfiltered sound advice, actionable advice that you can put into action immediately on dating, relationships, sex, go to donovansharp.com forward slash consults with an S on the end and fill out the questionnaire. When you fill out the questionnaire, guys, make sure you give details, stories, and examples. The more information you give me, the more effective my advice will be. So don't be afraid to write me a novel, guys. Don't be afraid to write a five-page uh, five dissertation if you have to. More is more. Now, my consultations are not cheap, but there are a couple of ways to save a substantial amount of money. The first way is to become an $8 patron. As an $8 patron, you'll get access to exclusive weekly articles and videos, but you'll also get a 40% discount when you book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. The second way is to become a $25 patron. You'll get exclusive articles and videos as well, but you will also get a 30-minute consultation every month at no additional charge. Now, this is a great benefit to have in your hip pocket because I can give you monthly advice on an ongoing situation you may be dealing with, how to progress with your newfound red pill awareness and knowledge, or if you just want to give me weekly or monthly, a monthly report on your date, your women, or anything else you have going on. So go to patreon.com forward slash Donovan Sharp 
to become a patron or go to donovansharp.com forward slash consults. That's plural. Book your one-on-one -on -one consult with yours truly today and get a jump start on your red pill renaissance. Let's check the chat and see who we've got going on in the TSR Towers here. Of course, you guys know I am streaming this live to three of my YouTube channels. I'm also streaming this live to Facebook as well as Twitter. So you guys also have the opportunity to chat in as well. Ordep Swabi on the Facebook side says, enjoy, I have a funeral, funeral to go to on October 14th. Hopefully everything is okay with Ordep Swabi. Shout out to Winston Wolf in the house, Dre the Great. James Martinez says, what if I don't want your results? I want to take it, I want to take your advice and knowledge and get my own results. For example, I don't like lingerie, I like heels only. I think the result is, is the result is the same, just a different path. Yeah, James Martinez, 100% correct, man. 1000% correct. Um listen, great comment there because Listen, we all have different things that turn us on in the bedroom. I, and I mean, we're all different. We all have different visual stimuli. I like for Devin to look like a porn star. I like her to look like a stripper. Well, I used to be addicted to porn. I saw a lot of shit that I liked in porn. I've banged more strippers than I am. I've banged more strippers than I'm willing to admit. Well, guess what? A lot of them have the physical traits that I like. So I make Devin look like something of a cross between a stripper and a porn star. She gets the nice... Slinky tan lines, I make her wear heels and hoops and, you know, lipstick and thongs and, you know, all sorts of slinky whatever. That's what turns me on. James Martinez is more of a just straight heels. Like, hey, bitch, just come in. Just you're naked in heels. Let's do it. Totally agree. Totally agree. And it's, it's been a while since I've uh, I've done just the hoops and heels only with Devin. I might actually, might actually think about doing that. Might actually do it tonight. We'll see. <laughs> But good comment there by James Martinez. Um, listen, if you're into the schoolgirl look, make her just like a schoolgirl. If you're into the BDSM, whips, chains, you know, whatever. Do you. James Martinez also asks, this is a very good question. I've actually thought about that. Would you say it is her coming out party as people are going to take pictures and post online? This is not Devin's coming out party. Um, yeah, listen, man, Devin, Devin is going to be with me if people want to, you know, you know, people want to post pictures online. That's fine. There's no way anyone is ever going to find out who she is or where she's from or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Um, and the guys that are going to be at the 21 convention are going to be very respectful. Um, they're going to be, they're, they're going to be very respectful. Um, but, uh, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about Devin's, um, the, listen, the only thing, listen, the only thing that people know about Devin is Devin really is her first name. Number one. And number two, you know what her ass and tits look like, or at least, dressed up in slutty clothes, but no, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Not worried about that at all. Shout out to Rob Cruz with the reggae show. NYKia31 says, I think the Eagles will figure this out. The good thing is that the division is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, right now it's the NFC least. It is the NFC least. Jerry the Great says Patriots. Yeah. Listen, the Patriots are, the Patriots, um, uh, you know, it wasn't, I mean, listen, they, they, they got to contend with the Miami Dolphins, but, uh, listen, the Patriots are better than the, uh, they're better than the Dolphins. I think that was, uh, I think that, I think that's obvious. Dre the Great says UFC 229 was epic. Absolutely. Rob Cruz says the co-main event was better. Again, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. I was not, I wasn't really interested. Listen, I was definitely going to follow and see who won and who didn't, but, um, but yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happened. Dre the Great says, yep, Tony Ferguson is a savage favorite fighter. Harry Perez says, nah, we are not done. They kicked a 63-yard field goal. Um, yeah, the Giants are done, dude. Like, I, I get it. Like, you know, you're you're a Giants fan. You don't want to say you're done, but you're done, man. Um, and listen, man, maybe they can rescue their season by beating the Eagles on Thursday night. Um, this is a must-win game for both teams. It's a must-win game for the Eagles. It is definitely a must-win game for the Giants. Even if the even if the Giants beat the Eagles, I mean, listen, they'll both be two and four at that point. But the Eagles are the better team moving forward. The Giants are done. Vincent Thomas wants to know about the Jaguars on the Twitter side. Yeah, listen, the Jet. Now the Jaguars lost to probably the best team in the AFC in the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, but yeah, the Jags are going to be there in the end for sure. 
for sure. Armando Moreno says, my Oakland Raiders suck. Yeah, yeah. And area code 702, I see you in there. I'm going to get to you in just a second. James Martinez says, the Giants should have drafted Donald. Falcons need to be more aggressive in trades and free agency. They have management from the Patriots and have in their mentality, next man up doesn't work when you have, um, okay, that, that wasn't going to but yeah, I understand. I understand what you're saying there. <laughs> Very good. No, right. No, you're right. No man for the next man up. Totally agree. Totally agree. Nurse and Jaeger says, yo, Donovan, today's topic was literally the one I hoped for after last week's episode, Mind Reader. Nurse and Jaeger, uh, what episode was that? What episode was that? If you, if you would let me know, cause my memory is not really, it's not really serving me. Dre the Great said, Connor, look, Connor looks sloppy and gassed out quick. Again, I, 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 I likened this particular matchup to the movie Rocky three. Um, at the beginning of Rocky three, it shows all the Rockies start with the last fight. And so the beginning of Rocky three shows the epic 15th round between Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed. Rocky hits Apollo with a left. They both go down and Rocky stands up one second before Apollo and he wins the heavyweight title. Well, the beginning of now it's the, now he's the heavyweight champion of the world. And Mick is set. He's, he's making sure that Rocky stays champion for as long as possible. So he's not really fighting guys who have that hunger, that eye of the tiger, because Mickey understood that Rocky was becoming civilized. He told him so. Well, he ran up on Mr. T, who absolutely destroyed him. Mick, of course, dies after the fight. Rocky starts to question himself. But Rocky was not as hungry when he, he wasn't as hungry in Rocky three because he had everything. He was a millionaire. He's, you know, he just got married. You know, he had a, you know, a brand new baby. Like life had changed. Well, Conor McGregor made generational wealth off of that Mayweather fight and good for him. But when you are already satiated, you're just not going to be as hungry. Conor McGregor probably didn't put as much work in into the conditioning. He probably didn't train as hard. He probably doesn't he probably doesn't even realize that he didn't train as hard as he normally does. And this is probably why he was gassed. Uh, listen, I'll probably find the fight somewhere on YouTube and and check that out. Definitely. Dre the Great says SJWs took the big L. Absolutely. Nurse and Yeager says NFL in pink gear. The medium in, is the is in the message strike. Too. Not as many guys are wearing pink gear. Uh, Carson Wentz, unfortunately, wore the pink cleats, but whatever, whatever. Carson Wentz also wears a wedding ring on the football field, which isn't something that I that I agree with, but whatever, man. Just keep throwing touchdown passes. SA6546 says how to convince a girl something it's pre-recorded. Never engages with comments. See, whatever. I need someone to filter my text. Okay, all right, all right. Yes, yeah, Sharpa says the NFL uh, up the cancer thing to all cancer, not just breast cancer. Yeah, yeah. This is their, again, this is them adjusting to the market. Listen, man, ESPN and other social justice warrior type sports networks insulted our intelligence. No, the ratings aren't down because we're pandering to women. The ratings are down because it's an election year. There are other factors involved. More people watching. No, 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 no. The ratings were down because you guys kept pandering to women. That's just all there is to it. Like guys, and again, you can't be a successful sports network if you continue to alienate and demonize your base fan base. Every time you turn on ESPN, men are bad. Men are inept. Men are, you know, men are walking rapists, blah, blah, blah. Like you can't expect, you can't expect to continue with the good ratings if you continue to berate your audience. And the NFL seems to have figured that out. Mark Gordon says, good afternoon, Donovan, catching your show from Dublin, Ireland. All right, good stuff, I'm worldwide. Jack Napier says he likes stockings. You know, I actually do have thigh highs for Devin, um, but her legs are so, dude, Devin's legs are so hot. She has, oh my God, she has sexy fucking legs. And I just do not, I do not like covering those up. Harry Perez says she's freaking hot. Yes, she is. I cannot wait to fuck her later on. Chase LeBeau says the Eagles are better than the Falcons. And eh, maybe, but not by much. <laughs> ben Flavis Awareness says, Donovan, do you get cursed by black chicks a lot for not fucking with them? Yeah, go and watch a few of the Brother Pill uh, episodes on O'Shea Duke Jackson's uh, vlog channel. And you'll quickly get you'll quickly get the answer to your question. 
Nerds and Jaeger says it was the sexual market value versus the relationship market value question. Okay, there, uh, that, that was the episode that got him thinking about uh, how I trained Devin. Yes, Freelance Ronin says, um, Clubber Lang was hungry in Rocky Three. Hell yeah, he was. You all saw him. Like the beginning montage is like, I want Balboa. He's looking right at Mick. He's like, I want Balboa. And Mick is in the audience. He's looking scared to death. And I remember Balboa and, and Lang actually goaded Rocky. Like they released the statue and, oh, you know, Rocky, you're the best. And Mr. T shows up and is like, yo, don't give him a statue. Give him guts. And Rocky's like, ah, whatever. I'm the champ. You're not. Then Clubber, then Clubber goes after Adrian. He says, hey, you know, he's, just like, he's like, hey, woman. He's like, I'm, you know, I bet you go to bed thinking about a real man. Why don't you come to my apartment and I'll show you what a real man is all about. And Adrian, being feminine, looked offended. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe this guy is hitting on me in front of all these people. Well, Rocky at that point says, okay, yeah, that's all I needed to hear. I'll fight you anywhere, anytime. So Rocky and Mick are sitting down and Rocky's like, yo, why can't, like, why do you not want to take this fight? Rocky didn't understand. Like, listen, we've won a bunch of fights. We'll do it again. And Mickey tells him, because you can't win, Rocky. He'll kill you to death inside of three rounds. And Rocky's like, why Why do you think this? He says, because you, he says, you became civilized. You're not hungry anymore. You've been, like, you. ever since you won that belt, you're a different fighter. That's what that was. A very, very good lesson to learn from Rocky Three. And by the way, Rocky Four is the best of the Rockies. And on Thanksgiving, like, me and Devin are going to the Poconos. We're going to rent the cabin in the Pocono Mountains for Thanksgiving. It's going to be wonderful and, and, and magical. But we are going to hit a theater and see Creed 2. Because I am here. I am here for Ivan Drago. I, listen, and I don't mean to get off topic here, guys. But I watched the latest trailer for Creed 2. And it looks good. They've got the music and everything. But the one thing that made my fucking hair stand up on the back of my head is in the ring before Adonis Creed is about to fight Victor Drago, Ivan Drago and Rocky Balboa are in the ring together and they exchange looks. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Dude, I went and saw this movie when I was a fourth grader. I was nine years old. And Ivan Drago was the scariest thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was unbelievable. So here we are years later. I get to see that again. That's just me being a fanboy. Anyway, anyway. Rob Cruz says, no way you can uh, take two years off and beat a guy like Khabib. D4 Station says, hey, Donovan, first time in the live chat. Sweet studio. Happy I'm now a Patreon. Motivates me to get my shit together. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. I love hearing from you guys, man. I love hearing from you guys and letting me know how my work uh, helps you guys out. I actually got called. I actually got called out on the air by a woman. Um, and I, I had to concede now this was on the brother pill podcast, but she said, yeah, we men need to start caring for women and we need, they need to start being more altruistic. And I said, well, listen, sweetheart, I'm not worried about anyone, but Donovan Sharp. Like I'm a selfish son of a bitch. I do me for me. I'm not trying to help everybody, anybody. She says, well, you help people with what you do. Okay. Yeah. You got me checkmate. <laughs> so that was funny. Jack Napier wants to know how tall Devin is. She is 5'6". Five, 5'6". Six. Five, six. Sean Visavadia says, How hard was the training, Don? How long? The training never ends, number one. But it took me 18 months. It took 18 months to get Devin to the point to where I felt like she was worth taking a chance on. So it took me a year and a half for me to get to the point where I, I can say, okay, you know what? I am going to commit to Devin. I'm going to push most of my chips to the middle of the table. And uh, so, yeah, the, the training was hard and it was arduous. And there were many, many pitfalls, a lot of yelling, a lot of crying. But eventually she got there. She stayed the course. She stayed the course. Irish Bateman says, yeah, same story. Connor got swallowed up. By Hollywood. Harry Perez says, Rocky went soft prior to that, though. Totally agree. Ronnie Brooks says, Drago was the shit. Dude, when I go to the movie theater, I'm, I'm listen, I'm getting an Ivan Drago t-shirt. That, you know, it's him, you know, I must break you. Oh, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Jack Napier says, Rocky 2 is better than 4. Come on. Oh, listen, man. Like, they're all they're all great. They're all great. But Rocky, dude, Rocky, Rocky Four was at the height of the Cold War. I don't know. Listen, man. I'm a I'm a I'm a product of the '80s, 
And in the 1980s, it was the Cold War. It was Ronald Reagan versus Mikhail Gorbachev. And all of the Nintendo games, the final opponent was always Russia. Super Dodgeball, Super Spike Volleyball. And then Rocky IV comes along. And now it's America versus Russia. East meets West. Rocky defeats Draga. It was great. It was great. James Martinez says Rocky III is the best one. Your nerds and nerds and ears says, I must break you. I must break you. Dolph Lundgren had, um, I think he had four, well, I think he spoke four words in that movie. God, that was great. That was a great, that, that was a great, great movie. Nine one four two zero five five three five six. Let me uh, quit running my mouth about the, about Rocky and uh, get to uh, what's going on here. Area code 702, thanks for holding your on live with Donovan. Go ahead. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, my man in Vegas. What's up, brother? What's going on, brother? Uh, I actually have to push back on you a little bit. Remember, when Ivan Drago was struggling against Rocky and, and the corners, and the corners were talking to him, I, if I remember correctly, they said something along the lines like, you got to do this for Russia. You've you, you got you to do this for uh, right. Right. He is, he yes. Said, so I fight for myself. Yes. Fight for no, 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 no. Listen, check this out. He right. said, right. listen, he said, I, I, listen, this is a bad Russian accent. He said, oh, see, you come to hero. Yes, if you are. Yes, if you are. That, dude, that was awesome. He's like, dude, fuck, dude, fuck you Russians. Yeah. I fight for me, motherfuckers. But then, but then remember when he beats yeah. Drago, he says, I cannot be defeated. I defeat all men. <laughs> dude, that was great. Dude, Drago's the greatest yeah. Rocky villain ever. It was, yeah. it was wonderful. I know, I'll have to say, and just one other thing, I would say Rocky Five is probably the worst one. That one was trash. I'm sorry. Ooh, yeah. Time, that wasn't good. Yeah, Rocky, uh, Rocky Five was bad, man. It I was bad. It really was. It, it, it's just so funny, too, because you know what? D, it's so fucking funny because everybody's like, all oh, the Rockies are great. It's keeping up five. It's like, oh, man, that doesn't even exist. Fuck that. <laughs> like, oh my god i'll tell you what though rocky what no, rocky what rocky 5 taught i think listen rocky 5 was i think that's probably the worst one a lot of people think that the last one was the worst one this was when he fought uh uh mason the line dixon played by antonio tarver the only man to really own roy jones jr in real life um i remember but what rocky 5 taught us was about who don king really was because george the duke whatever his name was uh, Tommy's manager at that point in time, I mean, he was supposed to be, I guess, the human embodiment of who Don King really was. And we found out that there is a CD under, remember, he has, he has Union Kane in the car. And again, I have this eidetic memory. I remember all this stuff, but Union Kane was talking about, oh, I need to get a title fight. Well, guess what? Tommy Gunn was the great white hope. And I, and I'll never forget this. I think I was the first time I saw this, I was like in the seventh or eighth grade because Rocky five came out in 1990. And I remember, um, I remember the Duke points at Union King. He's like, "You'll fight who I tell you, how I tell you." And I was like, "Wait, what? Like, you actually tell fighters to take dives? Like, I didn't get it. Like, that was the very first time I was like, oh, shit. Well, yeah, all these ac all of these accusations against Don King, maybe they're true. But yeah, Rocky Five was terrible. It was bad, man. It's the only Rocky I've ever seen. Like, okay. I've only it's the only Rocky I've ever seen. I don't know. I've probably seen it maybe twice. I've watched Rocky Four probably five hundred times in my life. I remember every line of that movie." No, you're right. I was gonna say. I think I seen Rocky Five once, and, and I just I just did it to say I watched it because halfway through I was like, "This isn't over yet." Oh, and it was then, bad. You know, it was bad. Yeah, I let it. That was really bad. bad. Also, the the one with the one with Mason the Lion Dixon. That yeah. one wasn't that bad, actually. No, it wasn't. I kind of liked it. You know what I'm it wasn't that bad. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. And you know, the, the the interesting thing was the dichotomy of Rocky. It wasn't really about the fighting. It was kind of about the story. So from Rocky, yeah. the first Rocky to the last Rocky, it's interesting. He, I think, he actually lost more fight on screen than he won because he lost to Apollo in number one. So that's so that's Owen one. He beats Apollo in number two. He loses to T in part right. three. Then he beats him. He wins against Ivan Drago, so now he's three and two, but then he ends up losing to Mason Dixon in part six. So in the six, you know, well, of course he beats Tommy Gunn, but that's not sanctioned, and neither was the fight against Drago. They didn't sanction that fight because they thought he would die, blah, 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 blah. But Rocky's record in all of the Rockies was three and three. Yet we all, you know, again, we all revere Rocky. Right, right, right. But I was going to say, so uh, I want to get back to the brass tax real quick. Um... 
because I was I was looking at your episode. I, I'm a part of this episode, the episode where you were talking about how men hold hold themselves back from their full potential. Yeah, that was a really good episode. I, I really enjoyed good, it. Good, thank you, episode. thank you. And you know, and you were talking about you know um you know what guys spend their money on, and you shouted me out by the way. Oh yeah, the absolutely, man. You shouted me out that episode. Yeah. So, but um, I was gonna say, you know, I like the episode because you know you talk about again guys. I think what guys end up doing is that they end up spending their money on dumb shit. They end up settling with, you know, I'm going to say low quality women, but you end up settling. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Or yeah. they reach, like, they reach a plateau. They reach a plateau and don't want to go above beyond. Or if they just, you know, they get tired. I think what guys have to realize is that the grind never stops. Right. And some guys don't want to face that. Right. Some guys do not want to face I'm, I'm fairly young. But what you know, but I realized that this the grind never stops. You have to love the grind. Right. You have to live for the grind. You have to live to like, you know what, I'm gonna be on my game today. We all slip up, we all we all need a rest, whatever. For sure. Some guys look down that at this but some guys look down that at this and cannot fathom like I gotta keep grinding. Right. I have to keep grinding, I have to get more money. It's crazy because to me it's like I made peace with the fact, Donovan. That I may be alone for the rest of my life. Right, right, Seriously, right. In yes. My mind, in my in my mind, it's it's uh, you know, if I can't find the right one, if there is a right one, quote well, we all know, you know, so it's so it's not. Sure. But if I can't find the right, the grind never stops. But what that means is, in the meantime, I gotta keep lifting weights. There I you go. Keep reading. I gotta keep. I'm saying I, I gotta keep getting, making more money. I gotta keep living by myself. I gotta keep improving myself. Full stop. There, there is no grind. You know what I'm right. I, I will feel like too. By the way, Jonathan, it's a funny thing too because you can probably speak on this. Cause you're older than me, but you know, I kind of feel like too. We're in it. I'm talking about politically, economically. Okay. And I'm not trying to, you know, go, go you know. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. We're in, a, we're in a transitional period where guys still think that model of I'm going to find the wife and the kid and have this one job and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's gone. Right. That's gone. Yeah. It, it, that, that whole thing is gone. So guys are still harking me back to the good old days when it's like, no, this is a new landscape. And if, you, and if you're thinking like, well, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to find this one job and blah, blah, blah. Don't dream. Man, I'm trying to tell Do you. Do not dream. Do not dream. You know what I'm saying? Every day, it's a grind. Every day, you you got to you got to be up on current events. You got to read. Grind. It's right. not about. Also, I like what you say too, Donovan. Where it's like it's not all about the pussy, man. The pussy's just a byproduct. There you go. That's right. That's right. And it takes a while for guys to figure that out because listen, pussy is great. Pussy is usually the main reason we find the red pill. But when you get deep into it, I would say year one, two, possibly even three. Like the light bulb goes off in your head, you're like, oh, wait a minute. The reason why these guys get so much pussy thrown at them is because they're not chasing pussy all the time. It takes a while to figure that out. Mm, right, right. And, and the thing is crazy too, because I'll tell you a quick story. It was, uh, I realized something, it was crazy because it was like, I was, I was at work, I was working at nightlife, and, uh, you know, I was, I was doing my job, you know, I was just sitting there. And I'll never forget this, Donovan. Two hard ten. Two hard ten. Woo. I'm thinking, like, you know, I'm on my, yeah, listen, two smoke shows. I'm talking about two smoke shows. Start walking toward me, you know what I'm saying, ready to get into the club. Oh, shit, yeah. I'm sitting there, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it was crazy because, like, Donovan, you can get this crazy part. I got a tailored suit on. You'll say, I got a tailored suit. I remember okay. about the fit. I listen, I listen to Kevin saying, I, I, I got a nice Good. tailored suit on. It was set to me, it set me apart. It was set to me apart from my, uh, you know, set to me apart from my coworkers. I'm saying, I, I've been working out, working out crazy. For, so, you know, my, my physicals, my physicals on point, my frequencies are on point. I got, I had the knock on my eyes, another recommendation from Kevin Samuels. I'm saying, I got everything on. And, and it's crazy because it was looking at me, Don, it was looking at me. I, I, I had complete 100% frame. And I was like, but you know what though? You know, of course they didn't they, they go inside the club, you know what I'm saying? The, the guy you see was some idiot. It, it, was, it was some blood I want to hate, which I'm not gonna hate. Sure. I don't want to hate. Right. For all intents and purposes, Donovan, for all intents and purposes, Donovan, the dude that they came with was a goofball. Now focus at me, he's just a straight goofball. I'm serious, just, just a goofy dude. <laughs> now it, it, you know, the, and you know, I was like, how did you know, how did he get that? I mean, he must have a table, spend the money. Who knows what the story was? Right. He came 
you never know. Smoke shows. But I said, you know what? And, and, and I said, you know what? It's more grinding to do. That's if, right. If I want to get on that level, it's more, it's more grinding to do. There you go. I, 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 got, I got to stay hungry. And the last thing I'll say is, and I'll jump. The last thing I'll say is, uh, it's funny because going back to your episode real quick, I remember my three weaknesses. My three weaknesses, Donovan, was weed, video games, and porn. That was my trifecta. Oh, wow. That wow. was my fucking trifecta. Like, seriously. And let me tell you how that works. I'll, I'll, I'll smoke the weed, play the video games. I, I think I'm tired of the video games. Okay, I'm going to watch porn. And, 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 and it just all fed itself. You get what I'm saying? Right. Oh, yeah. That, and I, it could be worse. It could be worse, like saying, you know, I could be high on heroin or something. But those were my, you know what I'm saying? Those were my three vices. And I broke out of those. And you know, so I, I broke out of you know, so I, I, I don't, I don't smoke weed. I don't play right. video games. And I don't watch porn. And it's one of those things where you have to be self-aware and always constantly grooving. Yep. Guys always looking for the off ramp. Yep. You're always looking for the off ramp. Okay, I, I, I reach the level. Here's the off ramp. Or I reach the level. Here's the off ramp. It's never, it never there stops. You go. If you're gonna live a life of excellence, if you're gonna live a life of excellence and quality, it never stops. That's right. That's Never right. Stops. Totally agree. Thanks for the call, man. And uh, thank you very much for the testimonial. Uh, again, call in any time, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. He, he makes he makes a very, again, he makes a really, really good point. We all have our vices and we have to recognize what those vices are. Because if we don't, if, if, and, and some guys know they have vices, they just don't have any interest in letting them go. Um, my vice, dude, my vice uh, the last six, oh, dude, the last three and a half years, my vices were women, cocaine, and women and cocaine, man. And it was great. Dude, I had, dude, I had the greatest three and a half year run of the hottest looking women, the highest grade cocaine that anyone, anyone could ever imagine. But toward the, toward the end, I recognized that this could really become a problem. And there were some other things going on in my life. I was going through a transitional period at that point in time. And I've told this story before. I would, I would do, dude. I would do below every weekend. I, I'd, I'd get a couple of eight balls on Friday that would last me all the way, th- all the way to all the way Friday night and Saturday night. We'd stay awake, do whatever, girls, this and that and the other. Go out and holler at chicks, paint the, paint, you know, you know, holler at girls on the Vegas Strip, whatever. Pick up game, this and that. Then I'd sleep it off on Sunday. Then I'd get up and and go back to my grind on Monday, right? Well, there was one weekend where. I did it on Friday and Saturday. I said, you know what? I'm going to get one more eight ball for Sunday, right? Did the entire eight ball that day. Then I then I did it again on Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday. On Thursday, when I finally woke up, the first thing I thought of, it, I picked up my phone and I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to text my dealer. I'm getting ready to text my guy. And I said, yep, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. And I, I saw the writing on the wall. This was the beginning. So I had to recognize I had to recognize very very quickly that hey, you know what? It's time for me to get a hold of this. Good testimonial there uh by your boy. All right. Let's quit running our mouths about cocaine and Rocky and talk about how I trained Devin, how I trained my girl to be who and what she is today. Now There are a few elements that have to be in place in order for, uh, there are three elements that had to be in place for me to get to where I am with Devin right now. Listen, number one, my value has to be high, okay? No, I'm not six, I'm not six foot four inches tall. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a millionaire. I don't have movie star looks. I don't have 3% body fat. I don't have washboard abs. I don't have an 11 inch, I don't have an 11 inch dick, but you can't be an out of shape schlub with no game who lives with his mother and is undisciplined financially. Okay. It, the reason why Devin followed my lead. Okay. Is because I, my value is already there. Okay. I was in, listen, I was in, listen, I'm in great shape. Um, obviously she knew that she knew that I had exercised financial shrewdness. She knew what was up. Right. And of course she knew that I knew how to handle women. So that was the first thing that had to be in place is that my value had to be high. She knew I'd met, dude, she knew I was in, in the real estate. I was in the, I was into real estate. She knew I wasn't broke. She knew, she knew who I was. She knew I was Donovan Sharp. So she already knew I had value. Number two, 
She has to trust you. Devin trusted me. And and when I say a woman has to trust you, this isn't in the way you're thinking in terms of trusting you not to cheat or trusting you not to run around. No. If your value is high enough, she'll learn, she'll learn to live with the fact that you may have a side chick or two. She doesn't want to know about it. Don't throw it in her face or get caught. But again, women who have made that choice to be with a high value guy knows that that doesn't just come for free. She knows that she is not going to be the only woman who recognizes who and what I am. Now, the trust that I'm referring to is her trusting that you're going to lead her down the right path. Okay. She has to understand. Devin understands very clearly that I know how to handle women, that I have a so listen, I have a solid handle on my life. She knows I have goals. She knows I'm working on projects and she knows that my word is final. If Devin didn't believe in what I was doing or what I was saying or the things that I instructed her to do, that will benefit. If she didn't know that what I was telling her was going to benefit a potential relationship with me, okay, or to make her a better woman, she would have checked out a long time ago. I had to show her that she could trust me. I told her to do certain things. And if she didn't trust my judgment, I would not be able to train her to do what she is now. So she's got to be able to trust you. Number three, the third element that has to be in place. Guys, this cannot be understated. She's got to want to submit to you guys. She has to want to do this. And being dominant in your dealings with women is necessary. But when push comes to shove, a woman isn't going to do anything she doesn't want to do. Okay, listen, you can instruct her, you can give her commands and so forth, but if a female does not have the desire to submit to you, if she doesn't want to surrender to you, she ain't going to. This is why the first two elements are important. Women completely and wholly surrender to men that are high value that they trust. If you're in neither, she's not going to bend to your will. Devin knew my value was high and she knew she could trust me. She was at a point in her life to where she was ready for something different at that point. Now, of course, she told me that. I never believe women, women when they tell me that. I'll never forget. I said, no, you're not like you're not looking for change at this point. Like you're not really looking for that. And I told you, listen, I'm going to put you. I told her, I was like, listen, I'm going to put you through some training. You're not going to get through it. You can't do it. She proved me. She proved me to be wrong. So those are the three things that those are the three things that must be in place. High value, she's got to trust you and she has to want to submit. The desire to submit. So now that we have our foundation laid, shout out to Freelance Ronin with the $5 donation via the streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp and the number one. Appreciate that, man. Freelance Ronin with a $5 donation. I appreciate that. If you guys want to donate to the show, if you guys want to contribute, I don't do super chat. And I probably will never be approved for Super Jet. Go to www.streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp and the number one. That's www.streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp and the number one. So thank you to Freelance Ronin for yet another donation. See, up, his name is up there twice. So now that we have our foundation laid, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about the techniques that I used to groom Devin into what she is today. These are the techniques that I did myself. I'm not I'm not giving you theories. I'm not telling you what somebody else told me. No, no, no. This is what I did. Now this listen, this is heavier and this is heavy and invasive training. And I want you to keep in mind, guys, before you get your hopes up and be like, ooh, I'm gonna learn how to have I'm gonna learn how to have my own Devin. Understand, most of today's women will not bend to this level of dominance and training, guys. The vast majority of women that I've done this with, with the training, they don't cut it for, for, for some reason or another, or they don't want to do it. That's perfectly okay. But the ones who do get through, they end up becoming viable options for being my main chick. Devin happened to do it the best. Listen, Western culture has ruined women for good. But, but again, if you stay the course and you display an uncompromising conviction in your demands, your girl is going to take to it so long as everything in, is in place. Listen, some things they're, they're, you have to understand. You can't control your, you can't, you can only control things you can control. There are going to be other mitigating factors that you cannot control. You have to learn to recognize those. 
Now, I want you guys to understand, or now that you guys understand what's necessary as far as what I had to do on my end, okay, and as far as Devin wanting to be trained and willing to submit, I'm going to go ahead and get into the nuts and bolts as far as what I did to actually train her, what I did to change her habits and it, change her ha change her habits and mentality to become what she is today. If you are listening on SoundCloud and you want to know what I did to train Devin to become who and what she is today, head on over to DonovanSharp.com or Patreon.com forward slash Donovan Sharp. Again, if you're listening on SoundCloud and you want to know what I did to train Devin to become who and what she is today, head on over to DonovanSharp.com or Patreon.com forward slash Donovan Sharp. If you like the content, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and tell your friends. Tell them to tune in weekday mornings at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific to watch live because as soon as this broadcast is over, you already know, guys, I take down the video and I replace it with an abbreviated version. This isn't something I want to do. This is something I have to do in order to stay on the air. If you are watching on Facebook or Twitter via Periscope, I'm going to go ahead and cut the feeds now. Guys, come on over to Don come on over to YouTube and watch the rest of the show. Just search Donovan Sharp. You'll see my channel right there at the top. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to let you know when I go live. Again, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to my Facebook and Twitter audiences. Come on over to YouTube. Do a quick search of Donovan Sharp to watch the rest of the show. Let me go ahead and do this here. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. Excellent. A little bit of a delay there. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. 